Okay, I'm Scott Fitzke from Lexington. Nate Carl, CTS from Hastings. And this is the Seedstar 3 HP class. So, planters that you have is a uh, exact emerge or a electric drive that could possibly have this type of monitoring system. Um, for, to start off, um, first thing you're going to want to do is go in and set up a home page for it. So go into your bottom right and go into your layout manager. Okay, well that, that's okay. Um, so you want to go into your layout manager. Your layout manager, what you're going to need to set up is a little bit different than your, like what your old planner was. Um, you've you will set up a screen with the main planner run page like this, and then you'll need some. You'll need another screen with uh, um, row cleaners, and then the s or the uh, vacuum function, because your vacuum function is going to be on a automatic automatic setting now. So, um, starting off just up top. Um, You've got your population, just just like you had before, where you can hit the button and you can toggle back and forth between a rate, um, dry land and irrigated rate. Um, if you, again, if you have a, a prescription rate, you can turn it, he'll, Nate will go over that in a little bit in that G button, that scene setup, and then also, if you want more rates turned on, you can turn those on there. Um, the active, next box over, is your active uh, um, downforce. So you can have two different styles here of active. You can have the airbags, um, or you can have the hydraulic downforce. When you choose to select, select those, and it's, or when you're running active, right up top there it says active it will turn green when you've got the planter down and you're moving forward and then it will start running and it will auto adjust the air in those bags or the or the cylinders for um, for the hydraulic downforce um, to change it you'll click that box right there and you'll go you can go up or down um, the majority, I mean, a lot of people run between 70 and probably 100. It's your preference on your sidewall compaction. Again, this is measuring the actual downforce on the, uh, the gauge wheels. So each, or your gauge wheels, if you, if you got hydraulic downforce, each one of the gauge wheels on each row have its own weight pin. And if you've got airbags, each section has um, a way pin. So your middle section and then your wings have a um, way pin on those gauge wheels. So, and like on an airbag system, it's just kind of an average going all the way across it. It's not um, perfect on each row. A hydraulic downforce is perfect on each row. So, um, to change it, you cannot just leave it up there like that. So when you change it, um, you've got to hit that arrow button after that, and then that changes it. So you got to, it's kind of like an enter button. It really should be an enter. Then over on the right, um, you've got an actual. So if you had an older planter that just had an air pump, and you seen the gauge and you were running 350 pounds, that would be the actual pounds that it's putting on. So it's take so it's gonna tell you that it's taking three hundred and fifty pounds to keep the row unit down. If you've got the row cleaners mat or shoved down real hard into the ground, so it's measuring it's trying to maintain the margin on those back gauge wheels. So that way you've got a consistent pressure there. So if your if your row cleaners are taking more, you know, you might need to lift them up if you can't get them. Um, next box or next box down is your seeds per acre. So that's kind of what you're used to. Your planter at a glance, you know, your center line is your 36,000 right there. Um, the 
let's hear down below that those green boxes that's your section control so um, when you turn them off with that button they turn white and actually I think that's the other way around I think they turn black when you turn them off and then when they're white is when you are in a coverage area where you've planted already before the box in the top right the little gray box with the lines through it that is called turn, current, turn compensation when you're turning around on an end or turning in a on a curve it plant each one of those rows plants or it, it speeds up and slows down each one of those rows so you have consistent uh, seed spacing like you should um, and you there is a spot you can turn that on or off um, the next box over is your singulation um, the singulation so if you look the center lines obviously hundred percent singulation and it will give you a readout up top there of your overall planter also just like it does on all those the uh, the top is your doubles so if you see the seeds with the doubles on them and then the below is the red X's with the skips right there um, the next box oh and then when you do that your simulation changes that's your minimum rows your max and uh, your multiple so it gives you a it gives you an overview or I mean which rows are doing the best so if you need to adjust something you might the next box is coefficient of variation so coefficient of variation is basically seed spacing um, you you're wanting to make sure that's below 0.35 that's when you lose your uh, yield and most of the time with that you know an exact emerge planter it's probably going to run you know that 0.2 to that 0.25 you know it might push up to three depending on seed size so um, bar, bar graph obviously the lower the bar graph the better it is um, and again that is uh, an overview or an overview of which or drills it down to which which rows you're really having the problem with or goods and bads. Um, next box is your um, downforce margin. So depending on how many sensors you got, if you got RHD, you're going to have sensors all the way across that like your rows are. And if you've got an um, active pneumatic, it, you're just going to have three, three or five sensors depending on how many rows or sensors you have. So your target line is currently set at 120 by that up there when you're inactive and so that it's trying to maintain that right to that line right there so it will um, take pressure off or add pressure if it needs to um, there's your highs and your lows um, you know most time is when we're running this only having three sensors on the active pneumatic is uh, you know you, you'll just have the one too but well, you got a third one there too that is your actual downforce again that's the old way of looking at it so when you didn't have um, active downforce you had a manual pressure that you were putting in there um, next one over is a tank pressure that's how much how many pounds that you have in the hydraulic air compressor that you've got in the tank uh, next one over is your ride quality so your ride quality is you know basically deciding on how fast you can go with the ride so you can get a better ride quality by putting more down pressure down but you're you're also sacrificing the um, ground wall compact or ground compaction ground wall compaction um, and then you can change this if you hit the box uh, up a little bit there you go, hit that one you, your ground contact that's how much you're holding it on the ground or it's bouncing so in other words that's how much that that uh, gauge wheel arm is hitting that way bar sensor it's sitting there chattering so um, any questions on that part Okay. Okay. So the next, 
going down, this is how you're going to turn on that box right there is a rotate seed meter. So you've got a rotate seed meter. It's when you've got it up and stopped, there'll be a box around it that you can hit. So you can hit that and it will fill it. That will run both the meter and the brush. And then the next box is down is what you want to do at night usually. If you, if you can remember, hit that and that dumps the seed out of the brush. So each time that you stop on the ends or pick up, there's still seed in that brush. So that they're just trying to save that brush. If you know, if you uh, if you didn't remember to do that, you know, and you're already out of the tractor, I wouldn't get back in it to do it. So unless you were, weren't going to be there for a week or something. So. But it's fine like overnight. It's it's fine overnight, but what, if you what's can. The, what's the problem with leaving seed in the brush? Well, so the brush is real uh, fine, and you can. It can stick and those bristles just kind of open up more. It isn't, I wouldn't turn around to do it, but if you can remember to do it, I would do it. So, yeah, it just, it, it can, you know, there's there's kind of that coating on the seat, so you'll, you'll want to do that. Um, go ahead and hit back there. Okay, so the next box over is a setup, arrow with the dot. And then this is where you can turn on your enable fast start on when planter down. And should be, it works like the old one, you got six seconds to start moving. So um, next is section control suppress during fast start. So doesn't doesn't have a message to pop up on you that the section it's not planting. So it knows. Downforce target step, that's just the adjustment between when we are adjusting the downforce up or down. <laughs> Having trouble again. Okay, active downforce pause timer. So you can hit, it's set on tech 10 seconds, so if you hit the button where you hit pause, and we'll show it to you a little bit, but that pauses that so it doesn't adjust that air. So if you go across the pivot, like a big lad roll or something like real long, and you want it to not mess with it, you can hit it. There isn't a whole lot of people that do mess with it. They usually just let it go. Um, okay, look, oops, go back one. So enable active downforce. So if we uncheck this box here and we go back, okay, so look up top, it says that set point. So this would be if you have a bad sensor or something that you need to run and you just want to run it the old way, you can turn it on. But so that number of 100, that is no longer margin. That goes back to what you used to run on the old, the old uh, um, little, green air little green air compressor. Yep. So that's your, that's your actual pounds. But you can still, you know, see your row unit down your uh, margin if you need to. So if you click, yep, your mar margin will still be there. It will just not auto adjust for you. So, um, yep, go back in there. Okay, so the alarms and limits. So your high population, high, low, 10%, singulation alarm. You know, kind of, you know, these are preset from deer. You know, you can adjust them if you want to, um, you know, but they're, they're all within parameters, you know. Um, the only one that you might maybe mess with is your ride quality alarm, you know. Being set at 50% is probably not, not really that good. So just, just note that you might want to look through it. Let's see here. Okay, so next box to the left. This is just a over, you know, like if you want to zoom into one row and see what's going on. So it will have target population, singulation, multiple skips. All of them will have that. Not all of them will have your uh, downforce margin on ride quality and ground contact. Because only, th if, if they will if you have a hydro hydraulic downforce. But if you've got active pneumatic, it will not have that. So um, go back there. Okay so, okay, so when you first turn the planter on, um, what you need to do to start it 
is if you've got a PTO generator, you've got to turn the PTO on. And then after you turn the PTO on, you will turn this lightning bolt, or EPG is what it is, turn it on right there. So if you, if you turn it on without the, if, without the PTO being on or the hydraulic, um, if you have a pull type, it will, uh, it will just pop up a warning message. You'll flip it back off and then you'll, you'll go about it again. Not going to hurt anything. So um, next one over is your, um, all your acres counter and your vacuum. Acres an hour, kind of like probably what you're used to. Next box is just a continuation of it. So. All that will fit on a GS3 with your rate controller and your auto steer and plunger. Well, well, we end up. It looks like it could be congested. It, yeah, it is. <clears throat> you, you'll have probably three to four run pages that will scroll through. And one of them's, you know, you got to have the road, the road cleaners and that. Well, he, he'll go through that here. So. All right, so that was our main layout page or our main run page. We'll see up there. Anytime we come and select this icon up here in the upper right hand corner, that's going to bring you back to the same point every single time. So from there, some of the other options we have uh, is our seed setup. So we'll jump into that one. This is where we're going to be changing over our different crop types. So if we pick at the top here from the drop down list, Corn, soybeans, you've got a few other options in there that you can have pre-built that you can come back to. You can see when you change the crop type up there at the top, you're also going to see the seed type down here change along with the seed disc. So you'll see those cycle through. Um, more importantly, if we're back on the corn side, we just want to make sure that we have the right plate selected. We go down here into the seed disc. Um, at, at times, depending on what setup, we just want to make sure that if we've got a Pro Max 40 in there that, that we're selecting that from the drop down. Uh, once we do that, it's going to tell us how many uh, seeds per disc we can expect with that icon there. And when we go up to rates, this is where we're going to see those pre selected rates that we had set up. So when we first started off, we talked about changing rates initially by that icon in the upper left hand corner. So of those, we had those two presets, and by clicking that once per time, it would cycle those rates. Now, if we have an additional rate selected, it's gonna auto-populate our alarms on each side of that rate. You can customize those if you want. Now, if we go all the way back to our run page, and we look at that same rate icon, now when we click on it, we're gonna get a whole new screen and we'll have to pick that from the list. If you just want to simply jump between two rates, then I'd suggest that you just have the two rates available in there, and then you can quickly push that without jumping into another page. Is it the same screen that you get your prescriptions out of too? Mm -hmm. Yes, so if we go back in the seed setup, um, for deer we always use rate six as a prescription rate. We'll just want to make sure that that is enabled, and then if we had a script loaded, we would go to that rate to, to pick it. You can still have other rates in there uh, if you're running a script. So if you get to an area that you want to deviate from that prescription, you can go back to just a manual rate. Okay, our next box down is going to be our totals page. We've seen this from some of those options earlier. We have our, our acre counters up there. We might run one for a, uh, a field total, maybe one for a season total. The last one down will be counting down acres. So if we know that we have a 120 acre field, we could type that in and as we run along, it's gonna count those acres down for us. Off to the right, this is going to be our lifetime totals on the planter, both in um, hours and acres. So if you've got a used planter, you wanna see how many acres are on it, you can jump in here and see. The only time that will be different is if a planter controller was replaced. Just like um, your dash has an odometer in it, that's preset, and we do not have the ability at the dealership for all the right reasons to not modify that value. Okay, next one down here is planner setup. 
most of the things in the planner setup really will never have to be changed unless there's a major configuration change on the planner. So uh, this is something we would typically set new when the planner comes in for an initial setup. We would come through the configuration and this is us telling the controllers what to expect to receive, what is actually on the planner. So in this scenario with the simulator we have 12 rows on 30 inch spacing which gives us 360 inches. We do have some drop down options that are on there. We can name the planner. We can see some planner dimensions and GPS. It will load default measurements into the 2630 when you pull it up for the first time. It'll identify it as the serial number of the planner, and then you'll see those dimensions come in. Uh, along with that, I would also just make sure if you're hooking up to the planner, especially for the first time, just like the tractor, we want to have a good measure up on that. We want to make sure that we have all those measurements in there properly. Ultimately, that's going to do a couple things for us. Uh, number one, that's going to dictate um, our mapping screen, and because in a lot of scenarios, we don't have a, a receiver back on the planner, so it's going to give us an estimated position of where the thing set planner is at, which is our coverage mapping, which affects our shutoffs. So in that same way, those distances are very important to be accurate. That way, when we go in to fine-tune the section control, it's that much easier out of the gate. If we do a, a really good job measuring up, that's going to be very close initially, and then we're just fine-tuning from there. Uh, let's jump to the sensors tab. From here, we're going to have a whole other range of options. Um, more importantly, we're going to see um, our height switches to make sure those are calibrated properly. Um, in here, we'll always see a lot of these setup icons. We can click that. This one is going to give us a custom option if we want the planner to the drives to start or stop um, at a different height. This is where we can come in and go to set those um, exactly the way that we want them. Save that. Go down here at the bottom. Click that. Same way. So if we uncheck that common threshold, that's where we'll separate the raise and lower um, versus just a, an on and off. Next box down. So tractor speed, we'll jump into that one. Initially, these will always probably most likely be set at auto. Um, when it's at auto, it's going to pick the most accurate source that it believes is, is correct. So it does a pretty good job with that. <clears throat> there is the option to put it in a manual mode where you pick the source. Like this icon, this actually represents radar. So we can pull from radar, um, a wheel speed sensor, GPS, one or the other. Um, or we can put in a manual speed. So if we wanted to run the planner sitting still, not in another diagnostic function or in the diagnostic tools, we can come in here, set that. As long as we trip that lift switch, we'll be able to run the, the planner sitting there. So if we want to check out drives or rail units or anything else, we can do that sitting there. Next box in our sensor tab. So let's do uh, the gauge wheel down force. Uh, this is a pretty important one here. In this scenario, we've got three sensors that are on this planner. So we have the ability to come in here and pick a sensor and enable or disable it. If we have one giving us grief, we need to get through that field that night, we'll get a sensor the next day. You can turn that one on, off, so you don't have to worry about it at that time. Once you've got it replaced, you can come back here, re-enable them, you'll be good to go. One thing I would look at, as you sit there, either from your main run page or in here, or in some of the diagnostic pages, we'll see. You want to make sure when that planter's up in the air and sitting, um, and we don't have those row units down on the ground, we want to make sure that all of those load cells are showing zero. If we're not showing zero, we want to make sure we're coming in here and re-zeroing those sensors. And this is something that is a good practice to do often uh, because we have so many other things that can be affected by how we push down those row units and ultimately depth. We want to make sure we've got a really good calibration in there and we're staying on top of that. Next one down see what else we have here. Vacuum is another one. Same principle. If they're not sitting at zero and we've got the vacuums off, we need to re-zero them. Now, if we're seeing that that number keeps rising up or is flickering, we probably need to be looking at a sensor or maybe some wiring issues. 
we can dive in a little bit deeper in some of these, this is just where you zero it out, that we can see further information on about all these things in the diagnostics portion we'll get to next. Under the drive section, so if we have uh, hydraulic drives on a planter, we need to tell it which rows are assigned with that hydraulic drive. So this is where we would map those groups out together and determine how we want those to function. Uh, again, this is something that we really only do in an initial setup. We don't see that changing too often. Some growers would prefer that they have some rows tied together or um, by themselves for section control. <clears throat> in here, we can run through this setup wizard. We tell it how many rows we have, which rows we want paired. But ultimately, what I like to point out is this picture will change depending on what you've done in the setup. So if you're concerned about, hey, did I get this all entered in there right? This is going to change for you to give you that indication um, and it should look right according to what you're expecting to come out of it. Should be just down to the diagnostics. In there we would normally see um, the software version of that, see if it's on the latest and greatest there. If we jump in our drop down menu, we'll get a few other options in there. Um, again, it's some of those things we just talked about already. It's just broken down a whole lot further. Gauge wheel downforce is a good one we like to talk about. So earlier we talked about how um, those were showing, uh, if they were showing zero or not. This just breaks that down a little bit further to dive in to figure out if we've got something going on with the sensor. Um, you'll see the same thing with, with a vacuum or height sensors, we can see all that information in there. Sorry guys, we'll restart this quick. Questions so far? Setup or diagnostics? You know, I'm going to take this planter in a lot of different conditions. You know, full till, strip till, no till. Mm -hmm. Some of those can even be all in the same field. Yep. You know, is that, is this, when you're going into a pivot corner that's been full till, is that going to adjust and going to be doing all that on its own like it's supposed to be? Or? Yeah, with active new data, with active pneumatic downforce, that's really what it's doing for you. So it's going to take those conditions that are changing um, to chase that margin target that you want. And really... To fix parking lots for like trucks, it's going to be full tilt and chisel, and we're going to go into a no tilt situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be all so how, so, so how fast is that planner able to make those changes? I, mean, I guess that's what yeah. does, it, does it take 100, 100 yards? Or It'll be, it'll be dependent on the speed you're traveling for, for the change to fully happen and also how big of a swing it has to make. So those will be the things that will determine that. And you'll be able to watch it on those graphs make that change happen as you go through those. I'm assuming that you go slower while it's making those changes and you can get Correct. Yep. Yes, the, I mean the air tank's only got so much in it. So that's it. Yeah. So once it's out, pump them back up, but they can let it off pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> the biggest thing to consider is, and this really dives in deeper, and we'll talk about it anyway since this is loading, but in the downforce section, I don't know if you guys had a chance to go through that. Um, that's a, It's a really good class to explain that, that we're really looking at opposing forces that are lifting that row unit up, and we're trying to counteract that. So you talked about a lot of those scenarios different tillage conditions, ground conditions, soil conditions, um, are all things that are going to change how much extra we have to push down on that row unit. So um, really, you know, there'll be times that you can do a couple things in those areas. So you talked about slowing down to let it catch up um, to build that air pressure to push down, because that's going to take just a little bit more than it is re releasing that air off. So um, sometimes we'll look at that ride quality really is a speedometer. So um, in a lot of scenarios, no matter what planner we have, if we have that inf information, um, we're looking at that row unit. So I know I can push down with, you know, however many pounds, 200 pounds of margin, but I'm gonna cause a compaction issue with those gauge wheels. So really you wanna find that fine medium between the two. So we wanna make sure that the row unit 
is at depth all the time, but I don't want to push down so hard that I'm causing compaction. And the easiest thing that you can change is speed. So there'll be times that you might pull it down to make sure those adjustments are being made. So ultimately your ride is the best and you're always at depth. We don't want to lose ground contact. If we do that, we're shallow and we've got a way worse problem. So I, I, would, use, I would use that indication if this ever loads back up really is your speedometer, that the ride quality, watching those gauges cycle through those as you're driving along. If you know you're going into one of those zones, pull those pages up and see what's happening. And I think you'll be able to, to pick that up pretty fast to build a trend of what you got to do to make sure that you're getting the best of all the worlds. You're making sure those road units are at depth. We're not putting down anything extra that we need to and that the pneumatic system is, is catching up with itself and making sure that we're making those adjustments. That was, I mean, that was pretty much the end of it anyway, as far as diagnostics. In a nutshell, that's really what the diagnostics is giving you is here, here we go. all of that extra information broke down a lot further. Yeah, we didn't talk about row cleaners. So row cleaners, you'll set that up on another run page or you can pick through the menu. Most time guys have it on a run page. See if it loads up. <clears throat> so there. Um, we're going to see what the road cleaners are at. Wings, center the wings, and all together. We've got some setup options in here that we can go into. Most guys are tying those wings in that center section together, and you're adjusting them as one complete unit. You don't have to, um, but most of the time you're going to set those to be adjusted together and make your adjustments. So the, the closer you have these pressures, so you've got two downs, which you can sink together, that's what I just did, and then you've got airbags going up on all of the rows. So you got two airbags on each row. So the closer you run those pressures together, the more, the stiffer it's going to be, kind of. I mean, the higher, you know, if you run 50 and you run 50 in the other, the down bag, it's going to, it's going to be fairly stiff plowing through the ground pretty good. So, this, this is not automatic. This is something that you're going to set. No, Correct. This is, oh, you mean, yeah, through yes. the street? Yes. Yep. And then the other the other deal is, go ahead. So that, I mean, really, that would just be, you know, if you're in some no-till ground and we got to clean some residue out of the way, you might, you know, set those down or have depending on how aggressive you want to be. But like you were saying, if you can set those numbers close together, it's going to keep that row unit or the, the trash cleaners pretty close to that one area that you adjust them to, rather than having those two numbers separate where it's got the ability to float either way or come up easier or, or be more aggressive holding down. EPG, this is just going to give you more of a, almost like a diagnostic overview of, of how your alternator is performing, your power generator. Again, we can cycle that from that main planner page to turn that on and off. So. Does it matter about the tractor RPMs? I mean, Not usually. Most of the time, I mean, even sitting there just still at idle you've got enough. It's kind of like the alternator in the car. It'll adjust for that. Because um, any kind of field condition, you're going to have more than enough RPMs. You don't have to come up at 17 and leave it there all day. And the, the other thing that we'll do that's not on the simulator is the uh, uh, vacuum control. We're it's going to automatically control those vacs. So. so instead of adjusting an SCV, you'll just set in a target and it will adjust the SCVs to accomplish that. Any other questions for me guys? Okay, we'll wrap it up. Thanks for coming in and attending the class. If you have any questions, let us know, we'd be happy to answer them.